Oh, hey, hey guys, uh, there you are. I'm just uh, coming back from a uh, grocery run here. Just getting groceries and uh, going to get some milk. I gotta go to the butcher shop and stuff like that. But anyway, I just had a, I had a, a complaint or whatever about uh, the exercise sticks. So I thought I'd just let you know what's going on with that, okay? So what's happened is somebody talked about they're not necessarily finding the exercise sticks on the website. And I just wanna to say to you guys that I have a very complicated life, okay? I've got Sasquatches in shipping, you know, doing all sorts of stuff or whatever, and, and they have to also run the website, but sometimes uh, the fact that they are illiterate, uh, you know, is an obstacle, okay? Let's just say it, it's an obstacle for them to properly, technically control my website. But I can't get somebody else to do it because these guys are incredibly jealous. So if I get somebody else to do my website, then I have a poo-flinging controversy to deal with. And trust me, if you've seen the size of these guys' hands, uh, you definitely don't want to be in a poo-flinging contest with them. That's all I can say, okay? So just bear with me, don't worry. The exercise sticks will be up there eventually. It's just that right now I'm dealing with a, uh, uh, a, a poo-flinging crisis. Train the muscles, not the joints. Welcome back to Natural Goland Bodybuilding. Motor. And today I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about isolation movements and a few reasons why you might want to consider using lighter weight. Now, I'm saying might because I know there was a guy that made a comment a few days ago and he talked about doing heavy dumbbell lateral raises gave him really great shoulder development. And this can happen. You can use isolation movements with really heavy weight in some cases, depending on how your body's responding to it. You just wanna make sure that your body is not necessarily uh, exhibiting any sort of injury type symptoms or any sort of tendencies in that way, right? Uh, one you know, common mistake that people make is they go too heavy on preacher curls, you know, and, and they tear a bicep or something because it is a very dangerous movement to use heavy weight with, or they do too heavy with overhead dumbbell extensions, right? Overhead tricep extensions with dumbbells. They're usually doing the two-armed version and when they go too heavy or use too heavy of a weight, usually because of the aggressive nature of this movement, it starts to create some sort of inflammation in the elbows. And I've seen this happen lots of times. I had lots of clients and people that came to me and as soon as I lightened up the weight on the overhead extensions and right away, basically the inflammation went away in their elbows and there was no problem. So that said, there are some times that you're going to notice that using lighter weight is the answer when it comes down to your isolation movements. Because remember, the goal is to isolate the muscle, not necessarily to uh, do the strength training, powerlifting sort of version of isolations. Although it can be something that works from time to time. But anyway, let's, let's get to it. The first reason why you might want to consider lighter weight is what I just said, what I just stated is when you're noticing that there's a bit of inflammation in the area or there's some sort of injury that is developing and sometimes if you're lucky you get some warning signs, right? You start to notice that, oh yeah, something's just not feeling right ever since I went too heavy on the skull crushers or too heavy on the lateral raises or too heavy on the bicep curls. Once you start getting these signs of inflammation or joint soreness or tightness and stuff, sometimes it's a good indicator that you need to back off on at least the amount of weight that you're using and just use lighter rep ranges such as 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 rep ranges. Sometimes I use 50 rep ranges with isolations. So remember, you know, the main goal is to stay in one piece and to grow muscle, but if you're destroying the joints in the process, there's really no point. It's not really doing you any favors, you know what I'm saying? So when you're using heavy weight, it's important to realize that the goal when using heavy weight is to move efficiently. It's not the right time to flare elbows on bench press when you're using heavy poundages. That's when uh, disaster usually strikes. So isolations are meant to put the body, in some cases, in an inefficient way of moving in order to isolate a specific muscle. But because of this inefficiency, sometimes you are putting your body in a compromised position and there is a greater danger of injury, which is why you usually use a bit of a lighter weight especially during you know some isolations as opposed to others. Speaking of isolation, I'm in the forest right now and I'm hearing a crackling of bushes behind me and I'm not really sure if something's behind me. 
And for those of you that don't know, there are bears back here actually, and cougars and stuff. So it's not like uh, I'm just making this shit up. I make this stuff up about the Sasquatches. Well, no, actually Sasquatches, there's some, there's some neat videos on the internet about Sasquatches. Actually, on that note, if you haven't seen uh, this one YouTube channel called Hammerson Peters, he has some great, great Sasquatch and monster and, uh, and mythology type videos on YouTube here. And uh, a lot of the stuff he talks about takes place in this area, funny enough. So if you want to check that out, check that out after this video. If you're hungry, I'm a little bit too lean. I'm not going to be enjoyable and I'm not tender whatsoever. So it's like eating beef jerky, okay? So yeah. I've been dieting. It always helps to let the monsters know that you're not going to taste too good because, uh, you know, that kind of deters them a little bit, you know? Now, another reason why you might want to use lighter weights when doing isolations is when you're not necessarily feeling the muscle you want to hit. A lot of times when you go heavier, you start to recruit other muscle groups in order to help with lifting the weight. And therefore you start to go against the whole purpose of the isolation in the first place, which was to isolate a specific muscle. One of those things as I see is uh, sometimes with dips, right? Say you're doing uh, bench dips with your legs up on a bench. Sometimes you may notice that if you go down too deep or you use too heavy of a weight, you start to recruit a lot of the front delt. But if you don't use heavy weight or if you're not putting too much plates on your legs and, and so forth and you start to rep out, you might be able to lean back a little bit more and isolate those triceps a bit more. Another example of this would be skull crushers. A lot of times if I use too heavy a weight in skull crushers, I start to include a bit of the lat or the internal rotator cuff muscles and therefore I start to struggle with isolating the tricep just by itself. Now I'm not saying I never go heavy, but what I'm saying is that if I'm never getting that absolute for sure failure in the tricep alone or more so than anywhere else, then I might be shortchanging myself on the results that I can get if I lighten up the load at least once in a while. So that, that's another example. Another example would be uh, dumbbell flies. If you find that dumbbell flies work well for you, as long as you're not going too deep, don't go too deep in dumbbell flies because you're gonna, you're gonna wreck your shoulders if you do. But if you're doing dumbbell flies to isolate that chest, if you go too heavy, you will recruit a lot of the bicep and the shoulder in order to get that weight up. And sometimes that can also work against your goal of isolating the chest. Because a lot of times when we're trying to isolate a muscle, we're noticing that that muscle is not necessarily getting adequate work through the compounds and so forth, right? A lot of times that's one of the goals of the, the isolation is to make sure that you're really hitting that muscle that you're having trouble hitting during your normal movements. So it only stands to reason that you will have, in a lot of cases, a tendency to recruit the other muscles around that area instead of the one you wanna hit. So if this is the case, using a bit of a lighter load will help you establish that mind-muscle connection and also get you out of the lift heavy at any cost sort of mindset, right? And this will help you isolate that muscle and make sure that that muscle's hitting failure and therefore you get the pumpy and lumpy look. Mountain. Now the last reason why you might want to consider using lightweight on isolation movements once in a while is when you want to experiment with the form to hyperfocus that tension in a certain area. One example would be the skull crusher like I talked about where I don't bring the elbows up above but I bring them more above my chest instead of my head or my chin and therefore have a more aggressive angle with the skull crusher. Now this would be very dangerous if I was using heavy weight, but when I'm using lighter weight, it's not dangerous at all. I find that it just isolates the tension in a certain part of the tricep that I don't get when I have the arm above my head. So you can get more aggressive with the angles and you can do some things that are quite creative when you're using lighter weight and therefore hit some of those muscles that are just not getting isolated or hit properly with the heavy weights, right? Or the heavy movements. Because if you're using heavy all the time, it is good and I recommend that you use the form that puts your body in the least compromised position, but sometimes some weak links can develop because of this. So if you're going to put yourself in some more compromised type positions, I highly recommend using 
lighter weight. Like I'm talking about 25, 30 repetitions, 40 repetitions for a set. And therefore you can isolate some of these smaller muscle groups or these hidden muscle groups without putting the joints in jeopardy or quite so much, right? So this not only allows you to put less mileage on the joints, but it also allows you to see specifically where you're feeling the tension and be focused more on where you're feeling it instead of just lifting the weight at any cost because if you're doing a one or two rep set sometimes you're you're struggling so much just to get the weight up you're too preoccupied to really see or be aware of exactly where those forces are playing out so yeah these are some times that you might want to use lighter weight when doing isolation movements i hope this helps you in your training thanks a lot for watching if you need to get a hold of me just go to naturalandbodybuilding.com and thanks to the patreon supporters and take care for now mountain Natural land.